Oh, let me move that back a bit. Can't do with you right up in there. Hey up everybody, how you doing? I hope you're keeping well. It's been a while. Sorry, I'm uh, I'm doing something I don't normally do and that's rigging up on the beach because I ran out of bits and pieces. And I don't know if you can tell from the backdrop, I'm not in Yorkshire anymore. <laughs> I couldn't be further from it, to be fair. Um, yeah, I'll talk to you about where I am and who I'm with in a bit. There's just something I want to address in the intro. I've been away for a little bit. And I'm going to be away for a little bit longer. Uh, the video schedule is being dropped. Um, I'm having a bit, of, bit of a break from filming. A bit of a break from YouTube. And... To be perfectly honest, I don't know how long for. Uh, I know... I'm gonna what I'm gonna do basically there we go I'm starting arguments with the locals you must know where I'm from some runners just run through my line apparently it's my fault might give you an indication as to where I'm from where I am <laughs> Missus is going to kill me by far end of this video. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, intro, keep it brief. I'm taking a sabbatical. I'm going to record special, special trips out like this one. It's not every day I drive or get driven four or five, four or five hours to the coast to come fishing. So we're a long way from home. So I thought it'd be rude not to film. Like I said, I've not gone, I've not disappeared, I am coming back. In the very least, I'm thinking I'm not going to I'm not going to do any regular filming until September time. So it's a month off. In the most, I'm thinking I might be off until cod season. We'll have to wait and see. So that's what I wanted to say. Now it down. I'll talk more about why in the actual video, but I'll roll the intro, I'll keep rigging up and we'll have a bit more talking. Oh, and the setup time lapse of the bits and bobs just because it's very pretty out there. <laughs> Christchurch, Christchurch. So whether that's Bournemouth, Southampton, I don't know. 
but I'm in Christchurch. I'm on Christchurch Beach right now. That's where I am. I don't know why I've just opened the beads when it's a crimp I want first. Well, that lives there now. Um, not used to rigging up on the beach, as you know, if you watch my videos. I normally come prepared, but Gordon offered to drive and I offered to make some rigs. So I made him rigs with all the components I had left at home and ran out of components to make myself a nice simple three up flapper. So I'm now making one now. Um, so yeah, I'm down south, I'm in Christchurch, I'm on Christchurch Beach, I'm down south. So, you know, warm Mr. Welcomes. Like I said, apparently it's my fault that they ran into my line. I'm not going to get into the whole north-south thing so Mrs. will absolutely lynch me. Mrs. is a southerner. My dad's a southerner, Mrs. is a southerner, Marcus is a southerner. Gordon from Wolfman Fishing, the gent who's very kindly brought me down here, he's a southerner. So I know a lot of southerners. And it's, it's come down, we've come down, what, for what reason? Well, because I think Gordon was a bit homesick, he wanted to come fish down south, and like I say, he very kindly offered to bring me along. He's driven past me to, you know, he would have driven past me to come this way, but, he, you know, it's just really, really kind of him. So I would appreciate it if you'd nip along to his channel and show him some love. It's Wolfman Fishing, link will be in the video description i will take the time to actually update my description there's going to be a few things that i'm going to be doing while i'm off uh one of which is going to be actually i'm trying to set up an allotment again because uh, i've been trying to get the allotment channel the gardening channel back up and running uh but we just couldn't you know i was trying to partner with marcus on his allotment couldn't get a key couldn't get Couldn't get regular access because couldn't get me a key. Um, so that fell by the wayside, which means that a competition that I ran on that channel unfortunately fell by the wayside. I will contact the. Sorry. I will contact the sponsors of that competition and see if it's alright still to do it because uh, the, the goods were coming straight from them not from me um, so if, you, if, you're from, if you've come across from here from there to here and if you're entered into that competition I've not forgotten well I say I've not forgotten I haven't forgotten I just uh, I haven't been able to film a gardening video I haven't been able to get on to Marcus's plot since I planted the potatoes um, so yeah, I've not forgotten, I just can't, I just haven't had a chance. So, we are down here, I am down here today with the aforementioned Wolfman's fishing. I am also down here, or we have met up with Shane, Sean, sorry, not Shane, Sean from Dorset Angling Live. I will make sure that the correct channel names and the links to their channels are in the video description. Uh, we have David Haynes from the most accommodating uh, YouTube fishing channel. I know most of my subscribers are in that um, fishing channel on Facebook. Uh, 
it's sea fishing youtube videos i can't remember like i said video link, links to the channels will be down below and i believe shaky anglers coming to meet us as well jamie I believe. I don't know if there's anybody else coming. I say, I'm just here for ride. I'm just along for ride. I don't know what we're fishing, where we're fishing. All I know is I've been told, fish with a three up flapper with small hooks on and a pulley panel, but I'm using an up and over. Um, because I didn't have a pulley panel fishing for bigger things like rays and bass so what you'll have seen in the time lapse what I've cast out so far oh I didn't get my snoop line out um, what I've cast out so far has been or is the up and over with the whole prone on it it was just something to get out fishing uh, whilst we're sat here waiting, let me just get my uh, snood line out. That shouldn't blow away now. So that's out with the whole prawn on it. Uh, it's got an up and over with um, Seaglow actually. Seaglow sea glow Kato hooks and a Seaglow circle. I can't remember. I think it's a Mits. They call them a Mitsu circle. I can't remember. Um, let out while I'm here as well, might as well. So yeah, that's already out with the whole prawn and that's searching for rays. I'm reliably informed that there's still a lot of large rays down here. I've not come all this way to chase rays. Where I normally fish, even up on Stellingborough Wall, there's been rays coming out in mass, in mass. I don't know if Jonathan went live when he went down there like recently. Um, but yeah, they're coming out in mass on Stellingborough Wall. But my theory, it is just a theory, is that they were in there taking, I've got my hooks here, yes. They were in there taking harbour from the storm. So I don't know if you've seen on the news, but well, it's been hard to avoid the sewage things, hasn't it? Um, but yeah, I think the Holderness and Cleethorpe's coast has been absolutely battered with freak high tide, freak and big tides, like really big. Um, to the point where they've been worried about the cliffs and things like that and the homes that sit atop of them. Uh, so I think they just went in the river to seek safe harbour I don't know I'm not a pro if you stumbled across this channel of a man rambling about fishing that's all I do I'm not a pro angler I created this channel as a video diary of me learning how to see fish and it still is just that. I make mistakes and I learn along the way. If people get find value in that, hello and welcome to the channel. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's my theory is the rays have gone in to find a, a bit of shelter from the storm. Because they are well known to be on that coastline at this time, this time of year. I can't find them, but they are known to be there. But we've come down here, there's rays, bass, uh, gurnard, not gurnard. Yeah, gurnard, I think he said. Bream, sole, turbot. So we're just targeting anything and everything, really. So I'm going with, like I said, the, the, the pulley panel, and then what you're seeing me making up and talking about what I'm making as I'm talking is a very very simple three up flapper not the simplest of three up flappers because I haven't got any um, crimp and swivels where the crimps are built into the swivels uh, and I should have bought some actually from the tackle shop 
we've been to see Christchurch, Christchurch angling and if you're watching I've got to say a very well stocked shop very well stocked shop um, everything we needed and more um, it's not very talkative really but hey ho everybody has bad days don't they so I'm not speaking in a lot I love them the, the shop was amazing so well stocked so I do recommend checking them out the bait looked amazing we already had some sorting didn't get any but the freezers the frozen bait that I could see the selection looked amazing so well worth checking out if you're coming down here This is taking so much longer to do on the beach than it would do at home. Which I know makes sense, but... Oh, where's the crimp? There it is. I'm just going to be fishing with ragworm. So, yeah, let me just do this just quickly before I forget. The one man oh, I didn't mention in the uh, opening sort of this is who we're down with, at least I don't think I did. That's because I just wanted to mention him on his own. Because he's got to be one of the most supportive. Um, I don't even know if he's got a channel. I'll have to. I'll, I'll look that up. Uh, I know he was thinking about doing it. And if he has, I suppose when I say his name, it will be his channel. And that's JD, or um, it's called JD, the moderating angler. I think he's called himself on Facebook. I think that's because he's made a channel. Uh, both him and Richard Jarvis are two of the most supportive uh, community members that I think they're known throughout the UK fishing community uh, YouTube uh, 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 community as some of the most supportive people uh, that are currently out there so much so they're admins on my channel Like I say, if JD has done a YouTube, I'll Google it. I'll, I'll nip quickly now, see if we've got phone reception. I assume we have. This is where she, Sean normally goes live. Have a look. The rating. Angler. Let's see, does he have a channel? He does. JD, the moderating angler. Uh, oh, my side. Oh. And I'm not subscribed. Sorry, JD. I didn't know. I didn't know. I knew. I know a while ago you mentioned you were setting up a channel, and I didn't know you had. So I'll make sure that that's in the description as well. But he's got to be one of the most supportive members of the community um, that there ever was. So do go check him out. And if you see him in lives, make sure to say hi. Put you back on the rods. So quiet. Hello. Okay. Just set up. Just that.
Drinking Yorkshire's finest tea, being drunk by Yorkshire's finest down south. <laughs> yeah, not a great deal going on. But what a lovely beach. Lovely clean beach. One thing I couldn't get my head around when I looked at the tide times for here, sort of coming from the, the Holderness coast where the difference between low and high can be seven and a half metres. Looking at the tide times fear and the distance difference between low and high being uh, 60 centimeters. We've got a high tide at around about nine o'clock, so it should be around about sunset. Now, in my experience, that's when the fishing should start. Hmm. It reminds me of something I need to do with regards to um, Sea Angling Live's um, YouTube post. I need to, need to share it. Because uh, he got, he'll go live at about 6 o'clock, so we will nip down and say hi in his live. I've not sent me drag. Have I sent me drag? Actually, I didn't have to put it back on to reel in because a smooth, flat, sandy beach. And no grips on me lead, it's so bizarre. I do wish I had more of them short cast gripless leads. But uh, unfortunately, they were going to send me some and they never materialised. So, but it's not going to, you know, it's not, it's not turned me against them. I still think they're a great, great product. I wish I brought my sunglasses. JD and Sean have both had a couple of schoolie bats, so fingers crossed. Put you back on the rods, record on the rods until the sun sets, and then we'll think about doing something different.
you know. Never even saw the fight. I think it's a fawny. But here we go. My first ever ray. You'll have to tell me in the comments what type of ray it is. Because I really don't know. It has got thorns. But I'm going to get it back. I'm trying to make sure I hold it by the by the thick of the wings. So it has got thorns. There's the underside. Caught on squid and sand eel from Hooker's baits, the little match baits, on a size one hook on a three up flapper. Let's get it back. Is I that, had to keep it. That's worth the journey. Yeah, without a doubt. I had to keep it out of the water a little longer than I wanted just to get an idea on it but it turns out I've got myself my first first ray obviously I knew that much um, but my first undulate and that for me is worth its weight in gold because we don't get them up on the east coast or on the west coast I believe um, you know you pretty much Dorset, Devon that sort of area for them so that is absolutely absolutely over the moon with that and just hopefully it's recorded I'm going to save this I'm going to turn the camera off and just save this footage now while I fight with this rig and try not to pierce my hands with it but yeah it just felt like an absolute dead weight I think that fish had been on there a while but the one thing I do know about rays which I don't know much, but they, their wings, the edges of their wings and their frills turn red the more traumaed the fish is, and that showed no signs of trauma. But it was brought in nice and gently. I kept it out of the water longer than I normally would have typically liked to, but it went back, it swam off lovely, it showed no signs of trauma. I couldn't hold it by as high up on it as I would have liked. So apologies if there was a bit of mishandling. Um, I stopped and had the photos with it and I, I cradled it. I held its wings across across my hands. I'll put, the, I'll put the picture in so you can see it. So apologies if there were a bit of mishandling there. It's my own experience, inexperience and I couldn't get I couldn't nip it. I was held it by the fleshy part of the wings. I wasn't on the gills, I wasn't on any, I believe, organs. Um, I've got to say, what a great bunch of fellas. Um, Shane, Sean, sorry, I keep calling you either either. Depends on the way the wind's blowing. Uh, Jamie from Shaky Angler. JD, the moderating angler. Gordon Wolfman fishing. Who else have we got? David Haynes, who unfortunately couldn't come all the way down. He's not that, that uh, but what a supportive group of fellas. All they've been waiting for is for me to catch a fish. Because the, I've driven this far, they were so supportive. So, you know, do go check out their channels. And all it was on was a size one hook with a tiny little bait on that's about three centimetres long. Missing having my Akios towel, Akios clip on towel. Missing having that, but I hope. So that leaves me to try and target bream and salt. 
but I kind of got the bug for a few more rays, so I'm going to have another go. I gotta say, like I say, I just want to reiterate what a pleasure it is to be down here with such a supportive group of fellas. You know, I just sit in bitching and moaning about how shit life is, when really I should be taking taking pleasure and giving gratitude for the small things. It's amazing what one fish can do for your mentality, isn't it? Happy days. So not only have I caught my first ever ray, but I've caught a ray that isn't really known of in our waters, or doesn't frequent the waters I normally fish. Oh, that's a dark cloud. Hopefully that's not blowing in. Oh, that's very dark. So I'm, I'm absolutely, absolutely overjoyed with that. For me, that's that's the whole trip worthwhile. And I think for Gordon to to say, you know, he put me on that. I think you know he's 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 up blow, he's over the moon as well for me. And like I say, I know the other fellas are well happy. Um, although. You know, everybody now has refocused their efforts and is back to making, doing their utmost to make sure that they put fish, more fish on the bank. So yeah, that's that's breaking the blank with style, that is. So, I mean, all God, all I can put it down to, because like I said, we, we never, we never saw a bite. Um, the only thing that I sort of about an hour prior we thought we saw I thought I saw a bite and then when we checked the line there was that big uh, clump of not weed it's a bit well yeah weed but no it wasn't I said it was kelp at the time uh, it's not it's that is it's not snake locks but it's that um, slippery tubular grass like stuff um, fish lockers always complaining about it in his videos because it grows like uh, Well, it grows like weeds. Can't think what it's called. But that, yeah, there was a big clump of that on my line. So both Gordon and I put the bite down to that, twigging onto the line and catching a wave. 
but I mean, not knowing much about rays, it was lip hooked, you know, so it was very nicely hooked, and there was no trauma to the fish that I could see. So I don't know, maybe I had just hooked it, maybe it had come along and just sat on it. Who knows? I mean, the, 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 it was heavy from the initial wind, the initial crank, so it was on there then. So maybe, maybe it just didn't, uh, maybe it was just a gentle bite. I don't know. I don't know anything about fishing for rays. I know even less about fishing or targeting undulate rays. Oh, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm made up. Just absolutely made up. You know, that's that's one of two species, two main species that I can catch down here that we can't catch up there. The other one being, all this, not that I know of, the other one being bream. Um, so I'd, I'd love to round out the, the whole trip with hitting a bream, even if it's that big. Um, or a turbot, but turbot we can get up there. I've just not been lucky enough to find one yet. But what a species to break the blank with. I must admit, I'm now toying with the idea of putting two three up flappers out. But I think I'm going to keep chasing something bigger with the other rig. I might do a squid and black bomb next because, don't tell anybody, but there has been cod caught. Now from where I am, squid and black is, is cod candy. So I've got some really nice fresh black slaps. So I'm thinking I'll nip down and get some, some of my squid from, from Gordon. I don't think there's any in my box. There might actually be some. Yeah, I'll have to have a look. Um, and make up a, a, a nice chunky squid and black and, uh, and sling that out there. But then I'm also tempted to fish the blacks closer in for the flatfish. But I think I might start doing that at dusk. Um, but I, yeah, as tempting as it is, I'm not going to change up the rigs. As far as I'm concerned, target species achieved. I'm not blanking, so I'm going to I'm going to try a bit more specific fishing, a bit more fishing for the bigger fish. Um, it says leaving a three up flapper on with size one hooks on, but don't need big big hooks to catch big fish. I've got it out as far as I can cast a three or flapper, so it's, it's not close in. Uh, I would say I'm probably with this head-on wind hitting somewhere between 50 to 80 yards. No, sorry, 80 to 100 yards. I'm definitely hitting the sandbank, I can feel that on the retrieve. Which is where I'm told exactly where I want to be fishing, on the side of the sandbank. I'd love to get one over onto the other side of the sandbank. I just don't think unless this wind turns around I'm going to accomplish that and I mean if this wind turns around it'll turn the it'll turn the sea into a mill pond I mean if that would coincide with dusk from what I can gather that would lead to some premium premium fishing um, conditions but yeah while ever we've got sunlight I'll stick you back on the rods fingers crossed I'll get a nice bite on camera and some more fish don't forget please do like share and subscribe please go do go check out the other fellas links to all their channels will be in the video description I must remember to do that this time I promise to do it all the time and I'm terrible for, for remembering to do it generally speaking because it's a mad rush to get the videos up um, between sort of filming on the weekend working in the office Monday Tuesday 
editing, uploading and getting a video ready to go live Wednesday evening. And a lot of people said to me, Russ, why don't you why don't you push it back? Why don't you make it later? Unfortunately, it seems when it comes to fishing for the smaller channels, not so much for the bigger channels, but for the smaller channels, the, the likes of us guys down here today, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are premium uh, release times. The bigger channels seem to do well on Sundays and fr Thursdays, Fridays. Well, Thursdays not so bad, um, but certainly Fridays and Saturdays just don't. You just don't release it. It's just you get there's so many big, 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 big channels putting content out on those days that the little channels just get absolutely swamped. You just you just never get noticed. And for the likes of me who does very little promotion, like I say, my, my thanks go out to, to the likes of JD, to the likes of, ooh. Has he got something nice? Um, to the likes of Richard Jarvis, to the likes of David Haynes, the fellows who share my videos for me, the ladies and gentlemen who support the channel on the social medias. It really does mean a lot and I'm very, very thankful for those of you that do. Don't think for a second because I don't share them on social medias that I don't want it doing because I do. It does really genuinely help me out. Um, I just, I just don't have the time. I just don't have the time. It's not that I don't want to, I just don't have the time. Um, You know, between working two jobs as a mechanic and a and a and a, 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 a somebody who works for Her Majesty, His Majesty, sorry. Um, between three kids, one of them being really young, between walking the husky, um, that's it. Tony's not well. She's in and out of mobility at the moment. She's really struggling. Um, I just don't have the time. There's just not enough hours in the day to do everything that I want to do. So I really do appreciate those that are supportive, that help. And I wish I could get, I know you don't ask for anything, but I do wish I could give something back. But other than my heartfelt thanks, I, I just financially can't. I wish I could, but I can't. My only hope is one day I can join you on a beach and we can have a laugh and a joke together. Or my financial situation changes and, uh, you know, if any of you own a car dealership and are willing to sponsor a van build, you know, if you've got a, 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 a good shell of a van hidden away somewhere that's not going to make you any money, if you want to donate it to me so that I can do a van build, message me message me write in the comments email me find me on Facebook I would love next summer because obviously summer's now passing here but I would love next summer to do a fishing van build not a van life build but a fishing van build that's still somewhat family orientated if any of you know anybody that might be able to help me out hook me up I think that would be something that you guys would really enjoy and I would enjoy providing for you and it's something that I can do and still be with the family I mean if I had a fishing van I could bring the family um, but at the moment it's just not feasible anyway I'm gonna stop ranting complaining I should be happy for the small things I should be happy for the support of the guys that are down here with me today on the beach I'm happy I'm overjoyed that Gordon went out of his way to bring me here today. So thank you. Let's get back to doing some fishing, eh? Oh, falling over. Alright, this one charged. No, it's not charged.
Right guys, as you can probably see, this, this, the, we are losing the light. I've just been visiting everybody, it's been dead quiet for everybody. I've got a load of weed on my line, so I'm going to bring that in. But I'm going to have to turn the camera off. Got, according to the memory card, I've got 16 minutes worth of footage left. So, I'm going to have to turn the camera off. And I'll, if, I'll turn it back on if there's a fish. If there isn't, I'll see you, I'll see you whenever something else happens. Right, there minute. we go. I got my arse in gear and got... I didn't think I had my second memory card. But I do. So I got my arse in gear, got the second memory card out. Now... I'm going to do some time lapse just because I like doing it at night time I've not brought you know big lights with me because I didn't know what the walk what the conditions what you know what it was going to be like so um, I've charged them but I've not brought them with me uh, and I'll tell you what looking up and down this beach it's like an advertisement for Rig Shark, Rig Shark. I always get asked whenever I put these tip lights on and obviously now we're heading into autumn jesus we're heading into autumn um you'll see them more and more they are tip lights by rig shark they are the smart tip lights so they flash now i've got one on um my 15 foot continental soft tip rod so it will flash constantly but normally what happens is that they're statutory green and when they flash red it means something's having a, you know it, well, it doesn't mean you've got a fish on it means your rod tips moved so you'll see the, the, the Sensi tip is going like mad. It's flashing non-stop. Um, but the firm tip on the um, leader icon is pretty stout, pretty strong. That's why I use it as a big rig rod. Um, you'll see that, that won't go off that often. Not that I know quite can remember quite how well they show up on time lapses. Um, but yeah, sorry, the last sort of bit of talking was a bit short-winded. So I've been down to see everybody. I went down to go and uh, say hi to um, Sea Angling Dorset Live. Dorset Sea Angling Live. Sorry. I went to go say hi in his live. Uh, I went to go see Jamie from Shaky Angler. Uh, if I turn my head torch off, or am I glaring, you guys? No, I have turned it off. Thought I had. Uh, this is an Olight head torch, by the way. Uh, none of them are sponsors. Rig Shark, uh, I do have a link for, and I get a little bit of something back, but it's 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 nothing. It's it's more about just showing you decent gear, gear that works. They're lovely and bright. They recharge. They do rechargeable options for them. Um, I've recharged the batteries like once and the disposables that came with it and the one charge on the rechargeable batteries and I've had them for a year now it's crazy to think um, but it's like an advertisement for Rig Shack I don't know if it'll be showing up if you look down the beach I don't think it will but there's God probably 10 rods to my left at least all with Rig Shack smart tip lights on I think um, I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to turn my rods round now that the wind's died down a little bit. The main problem I'm having at the moment is weed getting on the line because it's such a, a steep beach that my close-in rig is just getting weed washed up onto the line because uh, it's so deep. Even though I'm probably, what, 40, 50 yards out on my close-in rig, the, water, the, the line contacts the water near enough at the... Um, at the back of the sand there so it's um it's picking up all the weed which is why it's going like mad uh but yeah i went down to see see david Ains. i really wanted to go spend some time with david before he left um i think yeah he's still here at the moment um but there's been no action no action it's been very 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 quiet um Right, so JD and Sean or Shane, sorry, um, both had a schoolie bass early doors. I've had the undulate, and that's all been it. That's been it. That's uh, that's all the fish we've seen so far this session. I think I'm going to have to change rigs because um, my rigs are just wrapping up. 
uh, I don't know what it is that's causing it so I think I'm gonna have to change the up and over to a pulley pulley pen or something a bit shorter uh, the three up flapper wow that is just that's just balling up at the moment so I don't quite know what to do about that it might be a case of fish with two pulley panels for a little while um, we'll have to wait and see but I'll, uh, I'll do a time lapse I'll see what it looks like in edit and if it's any good I'll leave it in if it isn't I'll speak to you when I next speak to you um, I think we're fishing till around about about 10 ish I don't know it depends on Gordon uh, Wolfman fishing depends on him um, he is my driver today like I say thank you from the bottom of my heart for bringing me down here um, he's made up that I've had my first ray he's made up that it was my it was an undulate ray as well so um, yeah like I say I'm happy now I'm, I'm happy as Larry I've came down I've achieved what I wanted to achieve down here it would it be nice to hit something bigger yeah of course it would but I'm not greedy I'm not greedy um, so I'm gonna have what I think is my last cup of tea um, David very kindly gave me a wrap and a Yorkie I was Hank Marvin so thank you very much for that David um, I didn't ask he offered he didn't know I was <laughs> starving hungry um, but he said he wasn't gonna eat it I'm not going to turn it down. Uh, not when I last ate at 11 o'clock this morning and it is now... What time are we on? I don't even know. Oh God, 20 past nine. It's a lot later than I thought it was. So we're now into the ebb as well. wonder if that's... No, it shouldn't be why my rigs are getting whipped up. Don't know. Anyway, time lapse. I'll speak to you in a bit. I never really know what's going on. Whether it was a line bite, whether it was hooked and it came off, but I lost something then. I'm not sure if there's somewhat on the big rig, because like I said, just keep getting big strands of weed on the line, which are making it really hard to identify bites. But I'll put you back on time lapse and see what happens. But no what, I'm gonna turn you off. Because even time lapse is gonna struggle. It's pitch black down here. Moon no moonrise yet. So I'll turn you off and I'll turn you back on. Hopefully when something else happens. Here we go, fellas. guys, the northerner is representing. And it gives me an opportunity to show you something. So what we've got actually is a place here. And you see how the lateral line, if you go back a few videos, I talk about the difference between place and flounders. The lateral line is straight and also if you rub your finger up the lateral line it's smooth when you get up to here on a flounder it's spiky it's rough 
the orange spots are a lot more pronounced but that's your giveaway because flounders will have orange spots so they're promiscuous species they can crossbreed and create hybrids quite freely but that is your one giveaway sign for a place there we go let's get this one back right guys that is going to be it from me and my southern exposure this evening i've come down i've shown them how it's done <laughs> and now i'm going home still could be loads more fishing to be had but long drive uh, i think next time we need to plan it with an overnight stay i think but there's definitely going to be a next time there's definitely going to be a rematch I definitely want to get back down and back out with these fellas again. So, as always, if there's a fish on that last rod that's out, there'll be a photo in here. If not, stay safe, tight lines, and I'll see you later.